stop being upset or worried that your belly is gonna make people uncomfortable. You know what makes you unco people uncomfortable? Weird vibes. Hey, welcome or welcome back. Thank you for coming to this video. We are gonna look at some fat acceptance TikTok today and do a short touch base at the end. Oh God, where to begin? Okay, so first of all, uh, we all have the same skeleton okay so we don't all have the same skeleton that's why there are height differences in humans she is replying to a comment that says fat is not a body type humans are not supposed to be fat we all have the same skeleton it's an ed and she is going to give us a fat acceptance biology lesson now because some people have tall skeletons and some people have short skeletons now if your point, which is what I think you were trying to say, which is that we're actually all made up of the same stuff, and therefore if we're all made up of the same stuff, then there shouldn't be fatness because we should just treat our bodies as they should be treated. You're really neglecting like all of the different nuances that our human bodies have. Has anyone else noticed that when fat acceptance is trying to explain something they don't really understand, they're always like, um, I think it's very uh, nuanced. Okay. There's also like internal organs, like how our internal organs work is different person to person. For example, some people are intolerant or allergic to certain types of food groups because all of our bodies are different. And maybe, maybe those factors have a influence on how we store, gain, keep, carry weight. So if your point is we're all made of the same stuff, I guess you're right to a certain extent. I didn't personally interpret this as we're all made of the same stuff. My interpretation is they're saying that regardless of the height of our skeletons, there is a standard distribution for our lean body mass and adipose tissue that's considered healthy. Maybe that's too generous of an interpretation. So like, for example, genetics, right? We're all made of the same stuff. So me and you, we both have eyes, we both have a nose, and we both have a mouth, but they look different. You know why? genetics they look different our, how our bodies manifest is different so that genetics can feed into like all sorts of things it could feed into like for example hereditary conditions it could feed into how fast or slow our metabolism is for example have you ever met someone who just seems to be able to eat whatever they want and never gain weight and we always say gosh they have a fast metabolism or they're naturally thin or naturally slender have you ever thought maybe the inverse is true that maybe some people are born with slow metabolisms and therefore they gain weight super easy and they find it really hard to lose weight and there might be a term for that we might call it naturally fat and therefore that's why we have a range of body types and sizes and heights like that's why it's really not hard to grasp i hope you've enjoyed my biology lesson I felt kind of like she was making it up as she went along to me. Her biology lesson here is implying that the reason some people are obese and other people aren't is the same reason that some people have green eyes and some people have blue eyes. And that is not how it works. We can't lifestyle our way into green eyes if we have brown eyes right now, but we can lifestyle our way into different body weights. How do you stay so fit? Uh, diet, exercise, genetics. Actually, when we look at the research that delves into the genetic components that do influence obesity, it still always comes down to energy balance. For example, some people have issues with their hunger signals. They might have trouble getting full or they may feel full for a shorter amount of time, but ultimately it's still about how much energy we're taking in versus how much our body is using. The history of the treadmill this weekend at a fat con, it was briefly brought up, but I wanted to do some more research on this. So I actually found the research that she did here to be pretty interesting, but the point of the research seems to be to prove that exercise is actually punishment. So keep that in mind as we watch this. In 1818, a British engineer named Sir William Cubitt decided, hey, we have a bunch of prisoners just sitting around not doing anything. So it was introduced into prisons in order to be a pointless time waster and to punish them. It's estimated that prisoners were forced to spend an average of six hours a day on these treadmills. In 1898, they were banned because so many prisoners were getting injured and getting ill because they were malnourished because they're eating in a prison and they were forced to work on these machines for so long every day. They were deemed as being excessively cruel. 
I was actually surprised to learn that treadmills had been used this way in the past, but to be fair, this isn't novel to the treadmill. Forced labor and tiny rations have been used to punish people for a long time, but she doesn't really care about the plight of these prisoners. She cares about twisting this into fat acceptance activism. And then in the 1950s in the US, they started to regain popularity again in an attempt at use for physical fitness. So this is important for a number of reasons and how it ties into anti-fat bias that we experience currently in society. We are often told that we should just do the work and work out and lose weight and then we'll be quote unquote normal. But the idea behind these things are that they were meant for punishment. So people are essentially telling us that we deserve to be punished because of how our bodies look. And when you look at this history and see how it was originally used in prisons for punishment, like that's where this idea comes from, that fat people deserve to be punished. No, even with this history, it does not logically follow that exercise is literally punishment for fat people. It feels stupid to even have to say that out loud. The lack of logic in fat acceptance spaces leads to a lot of really entertaining activism on their part. Like this little infographic I found that explains that because we can't expect a Rottweiler to turn into a Chihuahua through diet and exercise, that it would be silly to expect an overweight person to transform into a thinner person through diet and exercise. <laughs> and to actually have to explain to someone that they can still lose weight with diet and exercise, even though dogs can't transform into different breeds of dog with diet and exercise, feels pretty bad. When you take the chance- Now be honest, you giggled at that. You smiled or you breathed some air out of your nose or you recognize that it's silly. Before we get into jock scientist's analysis of our sense of humor, here is the full video that she's replying to. If you can't see the screen, it's a girl setting her camera up really quick to jump into a split squat with some free weights. And right when she starts, she's like contorting her face when you take the chance to go after your dream doing this kind of mellow dramatic bit and the girl making the video is actually a gym influencer herself so it seems like she's poking fun at herself just as much as anyone else because when i tell you that comment section not what i expected at all like scrolling through here i genuinely feel like i'm losing my mind the creator didn't even tag anybody. It's literally just supposed to be like a silly goose video. I don't know if y'all know this, but like gym influencer, gym rat, frequent gym goer, not a protected class. Coming from fat acceptance, who actually wants to be a protected class, despite the fact that going to the gym regularly would actually shift their body composition slowly away from that class. And nothing for nothing, but when I went through these comments, they were really mixed. Some people got the joke, some people didn't really, but nobody cried out like they do in the fat acceptance comments of say, a photo shoot. Though I guess I shouldn't be surprised that people who make their entire personality about their physique and how much they work out and how often they go to the gym have no sense of humor at all. Their attempt at jokes include making fun of people they perceive as not fit and like their own body dysmorphia. Again, with the irony of calling out other people for making something their whole identity when fat acceptance makes absolutely everything about their fatness and body size. And do you notice how the body image struggles of other people are always dismissed in this space? And like their own body dismiss- Like there is no second thought as to why maybe people in the gym would share humor about what they see when they look at themselves in the mirror. But like, hello, it's the gym. What? It is not that serious. Ever seen a hip thrust? What is serious about that? Y'all need to put in some touching grass reps some grip work so you can get one. I like her little joke here at the end, telling other people to get a grip, brought to us by the same people who have melted down this year over Taylor Swift using the word fat in a music video, Gwyneth Paltrow giving an interview about what she eats in her life, her day, a children's show teaching kids that body size and exercise are correlated. Brendan Fraser wearing a fat suit. And honestly, I know that's not even half of it. So if you can think of any that I've missed, leave them down below. Okay, this message is for me, from me. So if you're not me, keep scrolling. You have a belly. Hello? 
It's there. She's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna need you to just like get over it. You know what I mean? Cause you know what? You look cute. You look cute and your belly does not change that. In fact, I think it adds a little bit of pizzazz. So listen, listen. The body positivity here has a little bit of a Stockholm syndrome-y kind of touch to it. Once we've gotten to the place where we are convincing ourselves that we have to learn to love our bellies because they're not going anywhere. You have a belly and that's okay because your body is great the way that it is. Stop being upset or worried that your belly is gonna make people uncomfortable. You know what makes you unco people uncomfortable? Weird vibes. You are not allowed to bring weird vibes into today. Got it? She broke her own rule when she made this TikTok. I actually agree with her here that nobody's body will ever make somebody as uncomfortable as weird vibes. And that's actually, I think, something that both body positivity and fat acceptance don't understand. Oftentimes, the backlash that they receive has nothing to do with their bodies and everything to do with the weird vibes, spreading misinformation so confidently, performing the over-the-top self-love, denying science. All of that falls under the category of things that make people uncomfortable. And the root of all of that is dishonesty. Honesty has the opposite effect on people, and it's true no matter what size you are, both ways. Take a look at this clip of someone acknowledging a hard truth about their size in relation to dating, and notice how different it feels from the last clip. I don't really know if a lot of people feel like this, but I know, and you know, that people are gonna think I'm more pretty when I'm skinny. It's so hard to think about because Part of my brain is still like that. Like, if you don't like me now, you're not gonna like me when I'm skinny. The only thing that is changing is my body. Uh, my mind's not gonna change. And the other part of my brain is screaming, well, you're not gonna have the same, like, dating pool of, like, men now as you would when you're skinny. And it's such a hard pill to swallow because you can't hate on people for having preference. You really can't. Because there are certain types of men that I don't wanna date. And so I can't blame them for not wanting to date a fat person. I, I can't. And neither can you, to be honest. I don't know about you, but because of the way fat acceptance has bent reality, I was actually taken back by the honesty here. I agree that it's a hard pill to swallow, that our looks actually matter when it comes to dating. It's definitely romantic to think about being loved for who we are, but most of us can acknowledge that physical attraction to our partners is important. I love love and I am a very romantic person and it hurts my heart sometimes to sit back and just think about how I've never had the opportunity because I am fat, okay? Obviously there's other things that go into that. Maybe I'm not mo emotionally available, blah, 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 whatever. But the main reason is because I'm fat. And as much as you guys might try to convince me otherwise in the comments, like my friends do, that is mainly the reason. Actually, something that I want to talk about in a future video is that this idea of being loved for who we are isn't actually enough for fat acceptance activists. They don't like hearing this. I say that because when I see videos like this one, date or marry a plus size girl. Oh, yes, because beauty is within. I always see a good amount of backlash that's basically saying, I don't care what you think about my personality. I want you to think I'm hot. Because beauty is within. Fat women are hot. Just one more time. Fat women are hot. As a plus size community, I really think we need to stop accepting answers like this. The beauty's on the inside. So what he's telling you is he does not think we're beautiful on the outside. Like, that's not okay. Oh, it's so great. Like, no, this is the bare f***ing minimum. That is a conversation for a different day, though. Today, I want to end by looking at this weight loss progress. 
She's lost about 100 pounds and it seems like she accomplished most of that with running. She's focused on making lifestyle changes over a long period of time, I think five years, which is definitely going to increase her odds for maintaining this weight loss. We're going to end with the TikToks here for today. Thank you for making it this far with me. Let me know your thoughts down below. Before you leave, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed this one. Before we part, I do want to touch base a bit. The year is coming to an end and mine has been full of a lot of stupid injuries this year and doctor's appointments and it's taken a toll on my mood and I see it on my channel. So I want to focus on ways to get more content up. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I am sort of just thinking out loud here. I'll do a more in-depth touch base on my Instagram so you can get caught up with me there if you're interested. Let me know how you've been doing down below if you made it this far. I will talk to you in the next one. Take care until then.